Okay, up next, we got a lightweight bout between Christos Giagos and Armand Zarukian. Zarukian's a 24-year-old Russian-Armenian. He's 16-2 overall, 4-1 in his last five fights, 5'7 five foot seven in height with 73-inch reach. As for Christos Giagos, a 31-year-old American fighter, he's 19-8 overall, 4-1 in his last five fights, 5'10 five in height with 72-inch reach. Now, currently, the money line has Armand at minus 800 and Giagos at plus 525. So, uh, reach-wise, same Height-wise, Jagos is going to have about a 4-inch height advantage. I'm not sure that's going to play a big part in how this fight's going to actually play out. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see that we have our arrow pointed towards Armin. We think Armin Zorukian should probably win this fight. Now, in terms of striking numbers, Zorukian is landing 3.35 strikes per minute compared to 2.93 to Giagos. Uh, Zorukian is absorbing 1.43 strikes per minute compared to 2.77 for Giagos. So right there, that's interesting. Armand is absorbing a lot less uh, strikes, so his striking defense is quite a bit better there than, G than Giagos. I think that speaks to the way they fight, which we'll talk more about here in a second. In terms of takedown offense, these guys are both very active wrestlers. They lean on that as a part of their game. They're both averaging over about three and a half takedowns per 15-minute fight. Um, takedown defense, Armand Zorukian is defending 50% 50, 50 of the takedowns attempted against him, whereas it's 78% here for Giagos. So takedown defense there looks like it's better for Giagos, but I think they're both very good at takedown defense. We'll see how that plays out when the fight actually happens. Now, according to Tapology, Zorukian is the big favorite now coming in, getting 93% of the votes here on Tapology. That's been bouncing around from 93 to 94%, um, and the money line reflects that. It looks like Armand Zorukian is the surefire winner here for this fight, though I will caution everyone. Before we break this down even further, um, this this could be a parlay destroyer. Um, there's a lot of confidence here in a 24-year-old Armand Zarukian, you know, who's got obviously some some good fights under his belt. He's got that loss two years ago against Islam, Islam Makachev, where he actually lose by decision. It's his UFC de debut. He's 22 years old, and of course, at that point, just kind of blows up on the scene. It's like one of the best losses you could have. Decision loss doesn't really get hurt, you know. Pushes Zarukian. I mean, but Zarukian pushes Malkachev, who's a soon-to-be title contender at some point, um, to the to the edge of the limits of a three-round fight, and it was his and a UFC debut. So he's got some reason for the hype. Uh, let's look here more closely at uh, Zarukian's recent fights. So he's coming off of what three wins in a row? Yeah. So he fought uh, Matt Frivola. Back in July, so he fights for Vola. He comes into that fight overweight. Now, he didn't get a chance to train him an American top team prior to that fight, which is probably COVID-related, but the point is he wasn't in his best. So he comes to that fight a little overweight, so he has to surrender some of the post, some of the purse to Matt Favola. It ends up being a pretty damn good fight. Um, say what you want to say about Matt Favola, but Favola took the fight, even though he knew the guy was overweight. He ends up cracking uh, Zarukian. At some point, he definitely hurt Zarukian in round one or round two. So he tests him in that fight but boy, the wrestling of Zarukian is just a clear shot. You know, it's just so clear cut. Over the course of three rounds, I think every judge gave him all three rounds, and one judge gave him a 10-8 round. So the wrestling was on point. He really just overpowered uh, Frivola in every way, shape, or form of the fight. Now, both fighters were also supposed to fight different opponents leading up to that fight, but it was a last-minute change, and then they fought each other. And uh, yeah, so good win, though. Good win. Frivola is a decent fighter. Now, his prior fight was against Davy Ramos, all right? So Davy Ramos. In that fight, just a quick summary, he does win round one and two. He gets the better of Davy Ramos. Even at the end in round three, like he's he's you know circling Ramos, he's boxing and you know looking sharp in his feet. The one two thing two one thing about these last two fights I'm talking about, Davy Ramos and Matt Favola, the striking technique has evolved so much here for Zarukian. He's very good now on his feet. His boxing is straight. It's clean. You start going back to fights like against Olivier Aubin Mercier and fights like Islam Akachev and Felipe Oliveira. You start watching those fights, it was a whole different striking guy at that point. At that point, he was throwing more looping shots. He was throwing more unnecessary spinning wheel kicks. Now you're seeing Zarukian get much more tighter. His elbows are in. Punches are straight on the pipe. His kicking is more effective. So I, I see this young fighter at 24 getting much, much better with each fight that we're seeing him in. And so when you look at the Ramos fight, you saw at the end of the fight, he was circling Ramos. Ramos was frustrated. He was like, no, come here, let's fight. And then as he was doing that, then here comes Zaruki and tagging him, one, two, one, two, three. And ended up having Ramos bleeding and had a bad cut in his head the whole deal. The fight actually had to get paused for a second. The doctor had to look at the cut. So into round three, he looked good. I thought he had moments of fatigue, which, you know, I, maybe it was just him recovering a little bit. Um, against Olivier Aubin, Olivier Aubin Mercier, which he also goes by, what, OAB? It's his, like, nickname. 2019, he fights him, wins the fight. Look, he's 22 at that time. So, again, 22-year-old Armand Zarukian fighting in the UFC, second fight of his UFC career. He gets cracked in that fight by a knee from OAB. 
but he takes it. He double leg, double leg takedown. He goes right into it, does the smart thing, shows good fighter IQ, knows that, listen, I just got cracked here. I got to get into my wheelhouse. Um, showed a lot of smarts there, survived it, obviously wins the fight and gets himself a decision. Now, if that's one knock on him, I'll say is he's a decision monster. Has not shown the ability in the UFC yet to finish anyone. He had some finishes before the UFC, but he also had a lot of decisions before UFC too. So, you know, looking at the over prop is probably going to be something we'll talk about a lot in the prop show. But for this fight here, you see him probably going to decision as well. You know, Giagos is fairly durable. He does have some cardio issues. But overall, you see a guy here like Zarukian who likes to wrestle people, likes to be patient, doesn't feel like he has to rush the tempo, doesn't go chasing in after he gets a hard shot on someone. He's patient. He'll circle his opponent. But, man, when he shoots and he goes to shoot for a takedown, it's so clean. He sets it up. You don't see it coming. So his his like, his like takedown percentage is at a high rate because when he goes in, he's effective. He gets you down. He also knows how to keep guys on their back. So he'll win a part of a round just by position control. You can see that a lot in the way Zarukian fights. Now, as for Giagos, let's look a little bit more here at Giagos. Um, He's coming in here off of two straight wins in a row. He beat Sean Soriano, which was a late replacement. So Sean Soriano came into that fight a little late replacement. He was undersized. Round two, he gets choked out. And Soriano just got into a bad position. And, you know, Giagos was the better man that night. But round one, round one, if you actually go back to the film, Giagos was getting kind of pieced up, man. Soriano was piecing him up with kicks and with punches. And Giagos looked a little surprised. Like, wait a second, you're the replacement fighter. I'm coming here. You're supposed to get this easy win here. And next thing you know, he had dropped the first round. He had his hands full. Round two, Sean Soriano comes out. It was like minute, minute into second round. So it wasn't even like fatigue. It was one minute in second round. Soriano's coming in for like a double leg takedown or something like that. Gets his head underneath the you know armpit area, whatever, and basically falls into what became a choke. And so, um, you know, for for Giacos, that's a good win. Yes, you kind of re rebounded after losing round one. You get the win. That's nice. His prior fight, Carlton Minus, he wins that fight by decision. And any capper will tell you, not that we're cappers, but I'm just saying the people who run down the film and talk about fights, they'll, they'll all tell you that he was winning round one and two easily, but then round two, the gas tank, man, it just it just becomes a factor. He starts getting, you know, punched. He starts getting, you know, into some, you know, rough waters there. He ends up getting out of there with a decision win, but he's a different fighter when he starts getting tired. I mean, who who isn't different when they're getting tired, right? But he really turns into a different fighter, okay? Um, so, yeah, his prior fight, Jakar Close, he loses that fight by decision. Close fight, goes back and forth. He had his moments. He showed a good chin. Um, that's one thing about Giagos' record. There's a theme there when you talk about his losses. They're very quality losses or quality opponents. Drakkar Close, lost by decision. Charles Oliveira, he got choked out round two. Um, Shamil Nakiev. Now, Shamil Nakiev, when he fought him back in 2017 and lost by split decision, Nakiev was 7-0 at the time. Now the guy's like 11-0. So, you know, those are his three most recent losses going back to 2017. It should be noted that this is his second time around the UFC for Giagos. His first time around, he ends up losing to Chris way back in 2015, and they cut him after that. You know, he didn't do much. He lost to Gilbert Burns, lost to Chris Wade. I guess it wasn't really fair to cut him so quickly, but they end up giving him a chance. He comes back, and right now he's 4-2 in his most recent run here with the UFC, with those two losses being Charles Oliveira and Dracar Close. So, look, he's beating the guys that are medium, average fighters for sure. I, he takes care of those guys. I think round one, round two, he wrestles. And that's one thing. These guys are both wrestlers. It's a, maybe it comes down to who's the better wrestler. I'm going to argue that I probably would favor Zarukian as the better wrestler. Um, where is the like one in a million chance that Giagos wins the fight? I think it's because Zarukian shows his age, gets in here, hasn't maybe had his cardio completely shored up. We get into a later part of the fight. Maybe Giagos has fixed his cardio. We get into like a second round, third round later in the fight, and someone just gets a nice punch. Someone gets lucky, and maybe Giagos gets lucky with one punch clips this young kid and look at 24 years old if he were to get like knocked out in some kind of a flash knockout by tko or something like that to a guy like giagos i don't think anyone after the fight's gonna be like i can't that's amazing there's no way that could ever happen like no of course he's 24 okay you've seen in film of him recently when he fought guys like for example um frivola he got rocked against frivola <laughs> he did he, he took a knee to the freaking face against um oab so, look, he's left himself open a few times to get hit. Now, who gets hit more? The numbers show you. Clearly, the, you know, the, the fighter here that gets hit more is going to be Christos, Christos Diagos. He takes more hits. He also leaves himself open. When he goes to punch guys and he looks to exchange, he's not defending himself at all. He's got, like, this rocky mentality. Um, so, 
Anyway, just some more notes on these guys that I was just comparing them side by side. Experience-wise, I give the edge to Christoph Giagos. He's just fought more fights in the UFC. He's obviously older. He's been in there with some decent fighters. You're looking at his resume. He's fought guys like Jakar Close. He's fought guys like Charles Oliveira. He's fought, you know, uh, people like Chris Wade, Josh Emmett. Um, you know, so basically, look, Gilbert Burns, he, he's fought many more guys than Armand Zarukian. Now, Zarukian... He's getting an average gate experience-wise because he's winning his fights number one in the UFC, and the one loss he did have is against a guy who's possibly going to be a future title contender, right? So IQ, I give a slight edge to Armand Zarukian. Like I said before, he's been hurt in a fight. I've seen him recover from that, do the right thing, get into grappling, and at a young age, 24, he's going in three rounds with guys like Islam Makachev. You know, Islam Makachev, if you're surviving three rounds with that guy, your fighter IQ is pretty up there. As for Christos Giagos, I'm giving you a lower grade in the fighter IQ, you know, a standard because number one, the cardio, you know, and everyone knows it. It's the word in the street. You can see it. It's, it's you know, it's observable in the film. You don't love that. Is that a training issue? Is that a discipline issue? Um, and then secondly, the exchanging. If he looks, if things get a little bit rough out there, and he he's like feeling the heat, he'll just stand flat-footed and trade. Head movement, nothing there. He, he, his version of head movement is just this. Moving his head straight back. That doesn't work, man. When the punch is coming at you straight, and this guy over here, Zaruki, and throws straight punches, and you're just moving back, you're still going to get hit, okay? So he doesn't do any side to side head movement, and he likes to trade. So, you know, those are two things that for me affected our rating here for his fighter IQ. In terms of cardio, Look, I, I'm giving them both about the same rating. I know Giagos is rumored to have the, the, the worst cardio of the two. I think I've seen some issues with Armand Zarukian's cardio as well. So I, I want to see him show me here that he can go three rounds with a guy who's going to pressure the pace with him and try to grapple him for three rounds. Now, can Giagos do that? No, historically he can't. So supposedly he gets tired. We'll see who's got the better cardio here. But I think there's holes a little bit there for Zarukian as well as, as Giagos. So they don't get a good cardio rating for me. In terms of finish rating, uh, very low finish rate. These guys are both decision monsters, a lot of decisions. If you're looking at a prop here, the over two and a half on this fight is minus 185 currently right now. We'll be talking about that in the prop show, but that's probably one of the most popular prop bets. And you're going to want to look to find a way to bet in the fight, right? That minus 800 right now precludes you from wanting to bet in the fight because it's just way out there. That money line's huge. It almost forces you to think dog or pass or you have to find the method of victory. Try to identify one or two methods of victory that you feel comfortable betting on. In terms of their fighter's schedule history, who they fought, who has a better fighter history um, or strength of schedule, as you put it, um, I think Chris Jostiagos against get, gets the edge there because, again, he's fought more UFC fights. He's fought some guys that have been title contenders or even title holders at this point. But look, Sarukian, he passes all the tests. He passes the eyeball test. You know, he's got the roots, he's got um, the grappling, you know, and boy, the stand-up game, the punching, don't let anybody fool you. He can strike. He can he can fight a whole fight on his feet, be just fine and win the fight. Um, he's very good at striking. He's very good at punching. That's also why when he goes to shoot, it's such a high rate of, uh, of effectiveness when he gets the guy to the ground, you know. So again, my only knock on him, you know, is that let's see if he could do some finishing. Can he finish a guy like Giagos? People are talking about round three. It's possible. For Giagos, can he survive and have a respectable fight, take maybe the young 24-year-old into some deeper waters and be able to expose him, maybe crack him? And look, at one thing about Zarukian, he's got good stand-up defense too. He's got a nice tight guard. You go back three, four fights ago, his guard was a little bit looser. Now his hands are up. His guard's a little bit tighter. He looks good, but he's still 24, man. He's still 24. I keep telling myself, I have it marked on my sheet. Like, it's got a red marker. He's 24 years old, okay? So, and someone would say it back to me, well, he was 22 and he fought Islam Makachev and he went the distance. And so, yeah, I hear you, but he's still 24. You think back to when you were 24, you know, you, you, sometimes things just, you know, you're learning, right? It's a learning experience. So that's why, as I said, if, if, if things go south here and Giago somehow tags him and wins the fight, and it's by a knockout or TKO or something of that nature, no one's going to look back after the fact and say, that is a complete shocker. Like, he's a 24-year-old young man. So, anyway, um, with that said, too, look, Armand Zarukian over, over Giagos, everyone agrees that's probably the right pick for the winner. But that money line is this fucking respectful for Giagos. I mean, he knows what the numbers are. Everyone talks. He's a minus 800. <laughs> you know, like, that's crazy. So, I'm pretty sure he's coming in here. I hope he is. Uh, the American born, the American born Greek kid here. Um, now he's got a wrestling background. Wrestled through high school, but then after high school, didn't wrestle in, in uh, college or like that. Started fighting professional at 19. So he's been around the block. You know, the guy has fought. He's been around the game for a little bit. Um, but let's see what happens here. It's the veteran versus the, versus the new thing in the block. The new shiny toy is Armand Sarukian. Let's see what he can do here. Um, he's coming in here, like I said, a lot of steam, a lot of hype. And aren't those the ones that you kind of really want to pump the brakes, right? Ooh. Take a second here. 
Like, start thinking to yourself, is there a path that I could see Jago winning the fight? And before you say, no, 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 just like, come think, man. It's MMA, and it's possible. One more thing before I wrap this up. In our new videos, as you, as you might have noticed here, we're putting the links for their fights in the description here. So if you go to the description of this video on YouTube, you'll see in the description here we have the links for pretty much all the fights that we discussed in terms of like the Jakar Close fight, um, the fight versus um, Carlton Minus, the, kite, the fight versus Sean Soriano. So if you look in the description here for the video, you'll see about three links for each fighter giving you links directly to film of their prior fights. So made it a little easier for you. So if you're watching this video and you want to go ahead and like just sort of cross check your notes and see what we saw and talk about the fights you know, amongst yourselves, whatever the case may be, you got the links in the description totally free everything we do here is free 100 percent free you're welcome and when we do our full clip video at the end when we do our full fight breakdown for all the fights together we have a full extended list there in the description of all the links to all the fighter film that we've extrapolated from the internet and it's all free film all there for you so anyway guys thanks for jumping in here with us thanks for joining us for the breakdown if you like the video hit the like button if you want to get more of this content and you want to come on back and see more of the breakdowns and you want to support our channel right hit the subscribe button. We appreciate you coming by. We appreciate you visiting us. If this breakdown helps you and maybe helped you avoid a trap because I do think there's a trap there, yeah, that, that I'm good enough with that. Um, otherwise, yeah, Armand Zarukian should win this fight. And 99 times out of 10, he does win it. But you know what? Um, I said 99 times out of 10. 99 times out of 100, he wins the fight. But you know what? It's MMA, right? So you got to, it's MMA. Be careful.